and welcome to Lead Tracks News. I'm Adam Van Der Veer. And I'm Esme Icorn. Here are today's headlines. One man has died after crashing his car in a pursuit with police through Leeds. A train strike is due to cause disruption for thousands of passengers. And new Leeds boss, Uwe Resler, has taken charge in his first press conference. Our top story today, there was a fatal car accident in Hare Hills last night following a police chase. Sarah Hewitt was on the scene to find out more. It's been confirmed this morning that a man involved in the accident here on Round Hare Road has recently passed away in hospital. The incident happened around 7.15 last night following a police pursuit of one of the vehicles. The driver was travelling in a Volkswagen Golf that has failed to stop for a marked police car before colliding with an Audi A4. The man who was injured managed to stumble into here in Maureen's restaurant where he received first aid from the staff that were working. The driver of the Golf is being named on social media, 26-year-old Tesfer Hughes, who was airlifted to hospital, but died this morning. Tesfer was well known within his community. The 37-year-old female driver of the Audi A4 was also taken to hospital with serious injuries that are not considered life-threatening. Police are investigating the circumstances prior to the collision and have referred the incident to the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Anyone who saw the incident have been asked to contact the police on 101. I'm Sarah Hewitt and reporting for Leeds Hack News. It's Dementia Awareness Week and Leeds Irish Centre held an information event for the local community. The event featured professionals, carers and sufferers of dementia and featured talks and activities to get everyone involved. Lucy Chapman reports. I went to Leeds Irish Centre where they held a special event today for Dementia Awareness Week. The event was organised by Touchstone and Leeds Irish Health and Homes and aimed to inform the community about signs and symptoms of dementia and bring carers and patients together. I asked people at the event if dementia affected them personally. My mother-in-law and uh, she's suffering from uh, quite a lot of dementia. Sometimes uh, she's okay but sometimes she don't know what she's doing and sometimes she left uh, the door open left the water open or she don't know what she's doing. Dr Oliver J. Corrado, a consultant physician at Leeds Teaching Hospital, spoke at the event and has been dubbed a dementia champion. So it's a progressive condition that occurs generally over months to years, generally years. So why is this event important to you? Uh, because I come across people in my social life of various forms of dementia and Alzheimer's and I thought it would be a good idea to find something about it, learn and get information about it so that I can better enable to uh, understand and how to cope with them. And you're always looking for one significant moment but as the doctor pointed out, depending on age, it's a gradual progression unless there are any alarming signs. This event was successful in the local community and for Dementia Awareness Week as a whole. This is Lucy Chapman reporting for Lee Tax News. A group of travellers have set up camp on the grounds of a private boarding school. The camps have been set up in the car park of Woodhouse Grove School in Atherley Bridge, one of the region's top private schools which cost £25,000 per term. Vans, caravans and a horse arrived at the school nine days ago and the school says more have joined them in recent days. Now the school has launched legal proceedings to move the travellers on from the car park. However, the travellers have yet to leave the premises. There could be problems for anyone planning to travel this bank holiday weekend as railway staff around the country are planning to go on strike. Peter Roberts reports. A national rail strike is planned for this bank holiday Monday and the following Tuesday. It's going to cause wide, widespread disruption. I've come to one of the affected areas, Leeds City Station, to investigate further. One of the main train services, Virgin, has already cancelled all services on bank holiday Monday and Tuesday. Staff are striking at the row of the low pay, which could see maintenance staff, station workers or walk out. I spoke to the people of Leeds to see how the strike will affect them. Yeah, I think they've got it. They've, they've, they've justified in possibly striking, but it's really annoying for people who want to catch the train, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I, I never, I never go against people when they strike. Doesn't without knowing the full story of exactly why they're striking, I never ever con uh, contradict them. Because I didn't know anything about it, um, but I think a person's every right to strike if 
they've got a just justifiable reason. Well, it's not really good for the customers, is it? Not really for the passengers, really, is it? It's pretty bad for them. Um, do you think the right to be striking? Everyone's got a democratic right for strike, but as the government announced, you need uh, a fair amount of percentage of people to vote for a strike, don't you? Well, the strike has just caused absolute mayhem. Passengers are being warned to only travel if absolutely necessary. Other major services, such as cross-country trains, are also changing their times. Furthermore, the delays will continue on Wednesday as services return to their normal format. I'm Peter Roberts, reporting for Leeds Hacks News. Back to the studio. And we've just heard the unions have called off the train strike, but it is not yet clear if services will be affected. The West Yorkshire Playhouse has announced this week that it is working with a city consultancy to come up with a new branding for the theatre. Celebrating its 25th birthday this year, the theatre has decided it's time for change. They have appointed Chiller UK, a design company, who intend to build a bigger brand for the Playhouse with new arts development and education projects in mind. Managing Director of Chile, David Whittle, said he was delighted to be working alongside the West Yorkshire Playhouse and that he was looking forward to building on the company's vision for the future. Work on the rebranding will start immediately. Did you know it's National Vegetarian Week this week? Across Leeds, various restaurants have been making a special effort to celebrate the event. We've caught up with one in particular. Josh Granger reports. Here at the Grand Arcade, we caught up with vegetarian cafe Roots and Fruits to find out how they are celebrating National Vegetarian Week. We've, uh, we've, launched, the, we've launched the new menu to co coincide with Vegetarian Week with our, our new summer menu. Um, we've done it in conjunction with Laura Thomas, who's a PhD in uh, plant-based plant, plant -based nutrition, uh, and she's helped us um, construct a nutritionally balanced menu. This new menu, featuring homemade soups, rainbow salads, and an all-day vegan breakfast, has already proved popular amongst the people of Leeds. Despite the absence of meat, the cafe and its new menu are trying to attract not just Leeds' veggies, but the carnivores amongst us too. I think I'd like to say with, with most of the new menus, hopefully it will uh, inspire people to try vegetarianism for a week, um, just to give up meat for a week, and try a, a, a nutritionally balanced diet. See that all you don't have to be a carnivore to have a good meal. This is Josh Granger reporting for Leeds Hacks News. Uwe Rosler has given his first press conference as manager of Leeds United. Held at Ellen Road, the German, co head, German head coach was introduced to members of the press alongside the club's recently appointed executive director, Adam Pearson. From the press conference, Jack Payne reports. Having signed a two-year deal with the Whites yesterday, the former Brentford and Wigan manager joins the club after the controversial departure of Neil Red. I don't know how you feel, guys, but I'm very happy. You know, and uh, been out of work. Used to last six months to educate myself, to study the game, study players, and obviously I was always keen to come back in the summer. I had one or two opportunities, but then this one came at a very short notice available, and uh, can't get bigger than this for me. Introduced to members of the press at Ellen Road, a confident Rosler spoke of his happiness at the appointment and his visions for the club. For me, it is to develop a team and to develop players is not only how much playing time each player gets, for me is very much development is also on, on the training pitch, obviously because maybe of my background where I come from. Um, and for me is to create that hunger in the group uh, to drive on and come in for every day to get better. I think that is essential. Rosler's appointment has been welcomed by some. However, questions surrounding the treatment of Neil Redfern continue to linger. Before he was the appointment, but I looked uh, at his win ratio record on the internet, and he seems quite good. Uh, he seems to know what he's talking about. I watched the press conference as well. Um, hopefully, he'll bring a bit of stable, a bit of a stable situation to the club, which is needed, and hopefully on the pitch as well. But uh, Steve apparently knows what he's doing. So we'll have to wait and see what he's like. That is disappointing, especially if he leaves as well. I know the position's been offered back to him. But I don't think, it doesn't look like he's going to take that anywhere and he's got much better offers considering what he did with such poor backing at Leeds. Whether Redfern will stay at the club in his former role as academy manager remains to be seen. But for now, Leeds can look forward to a new era with Rosler at the helm. I'm Jack Payne for Leeds Hacks News. In rugby lead, Leeds Rhinos play Hull KR at home tomorrow night. We sent Gerald Asante across to Headingley to catch up with head coach Brian McDermott about the state of play at the club. Preparations are underway for Leeds Rhinos home game against Hull KR tomorrow night. We spoke to Rhinos head coach Brian McDermott about the fixture. 
and the opposition. They're, they're a good team, they've already proven that, but then you've got to say there's some unpredictability about them as well. Uh, and for them to have just beat the team that beat them 60 nil a couple of weeks ago, you don't, the, the danger for us is that we're not sure. We're not sure which version is going to turn up, and then the, the task for us is to make sure that we focus on the good version. But in reality, that's, uh, that is, there's a challenge. So, uh, you know, 60 nil is not a great scoreline, and, and, and you wonder how those things can happen, and then they go and turn it, or turn it around and go beat that team that beat them 60 nil. So all that needs to be managed. We're going to manage all our expectations, and we're going to make sure that we prepare for the best version of them. Rhinos have reason to be happy already, though with club legend Rob Burrows signing a two-year contract extension, which sounds like a mutual agreement. You don't underestimate Rob's desire to be a, a, a Rhino player through and through. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he, he, he's had offers and would have had offers from other Super League clubs in the building for this, but uh, he's committed for us the next two years. And I'm personally very, very pleased. The club's over the moon about it. Uh, it's great news. This is Gerald Asante reporting for Leeds Hacks News. Leeds City Centre is preparing for this year's Slam Dunk Festival, an annual heavy rock music festival. The annual festival held over the bank holiday weekend will host bands such as You Me at Six and Low Atlantis. There are three main stages at the festival, including one here at Leeds Beckett University. The others are at Millennium Square and at the O2 Academy. Tickets are still available to buy. And now for the weather, here is Josh Granger. It's looking like a cloudy start to this bank holiday weekend. Friday morning will see light rain forecast and intervals of sunny spells with temperatures dropping to a cool 8 degrees. However, on Saturday it's looking brighter with temperatures reaching 17 degrees, followed by a dry Sunday with a chance of sunny spells. Thanks, Josh. Great weather report. Looks like it'll be a great weekend. Are you up to much spank order? Well, Adam, I was actually thinking of going to the vegetarian restaurant trying it out. That sounds lovely. That's all from him. That's all from us here at Leeds Beckett. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.